Ladies and gents, once again, you're not tuned into your new favorite radio program, broadcasting from the legendary Natsua, located at 314 Main in downtown Houston, Texas. This is Patty's Radio, coming to you on HMS Net Radio via the Patty's Radio podcast and your new home of Patty's Radio, KPFT 90.1 FM. As always, I am your host with the most, the top cat, the man that's taking over Earth and still kicking in Uranus. I'm talking about the planet, ladies and gentlemen. I want to be sure I make that clear. I am talking about the planet. And as you hear, it ain't just me alone in the studio tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I'm joined by a special guest. He hails from this H, Houston, Texas, as it's known. His name is Biz Vicious, and you can check him out right now on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com slash B-I-Z. V-I-C-I-O-U-S. There's no cameras in here, but I have my eyes closed when I'm spelling. Ladies and gentlemen, our special guest on Patty's Radio is Biz Vicious. Biz, what's happening with you? This is Vicious. What's up, man? How you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I appreciate you not laughing when I was trying to spell with my eyes closed. This is fucking... Ugh. <laughs> It's beautiful to be here with you, man. Uh, I just I just got hip to everything you have going on. You gave me some shout outs online and I realized I need to check this out. And a week later, I here I am in one of my favorite bars doing this new hot show. Like, that's what's up, man. Absolutely, ladies and gentlemen. As you heard, he came in to show the Money Man Love on the edition of the show, bringing you some of today's most underrated, unheralded, and soon to be most talked about names in music. Now, we'll be in here with B-I-Z for the rest of the program. Don't forget, you can check him out right now on Twitter. That's twitter.com slash B-I-Z-Z-Y-K-I-D-V-I-C-I-O-U-S. It's the money man in here. Join with your boy, Biz Vicious. We'll be back with him in a second. To find out everything we're doing on this program, make sure you check us out right now on social media at P-A-T-T-I-S Radio. That's at Patty's Radio on whatever social media site you're on. Coming to you out of this H. That was one of our original Patty's peeps, your boy Break It Down DC of the group Honor Roll with his song, Necklace Marquis Daniels, Necklace Marquis Daniels. I like that. It was produced by Clayton Rivera. Make sure you check out more from Break It Down on Twitter right now at B-R-E-A-K-I-T-D-O-W-N-D-C. I almost couldn't spell it. That's at Break It Down DC. And speaking of Patty's peeps out of this H, we're still in here joined by our special guest, Biz Vicious, that you can check out right now at his SoundCloud, soundcloud.com slash B-I-Z, B-I-C-I-O-U-S. Hi, haters. What's up? All right, so if you would, explain to the Patty's peeps listening all over the globe, right now on KPFT 90.1 FM, HD Channel 3, via the Patty's Radio Podcast, and on HMS and Radio. Who is the man they're listening to right now? Man, the big question, who the hell are you, Biz? Um, you know, I, uh, I'm a kid from uh, Houston, Texas. Grew up in Meyerland, Fondren Southwest. Uh, I've been making actual music since I was in eighth grade. I started writing lyrics when I was in like, elementary school. But I've actually been writing songs since I taught myself to play bass in eighth grade. It was something that I really wanted to do. I thought it was really cool. I owned a guitar because when I was like, I was always like way more into rock music and like I, I just love like heavy, just like uh, rock. And uh, when I was a kid, my parents got me a guitar, but didn't get me guitar lessons. So I always got complained at for not ever playing the guitar that I had whenever I would talk about wanting to do music, uh, which my parents are awesome for getting me that guitar because I ended up learning how to play it and I was glad that I had it. But yeah, what's up, mom? What's up, dad? Love you, Bertha. Love you, Paris. Uh, my dad's actually some of your competition. He works over at, well, AM radio, FM radio, whatever. But uh, he's over at KCOH. All right. Paris the Prophet. Hey, man. You're listening to Patty's Radio 18, coming to you from 314 Main in downtown Houston, Texas, at the legendary Natsua. We're in studio, joined by your boy Viz Vicious, you can check out right now on SoundCloud, soundcloud.com slash B-I-Z, B-I-C-I-O-U-S. The B 
beat you're listening to in the background was brought to you by our boy Cousin Mike of I Am Top Shelf. So explain to the Patterns piece if you can some of your, I guess, influences or favorite types of music that may give our listeners some background into who Biz Vicious is as a person. Who are some of the acts that you listen to? And I guess where does your enthusiasm for music come from? Like, let's let's get this out of the way. I thought Papa Roach was the best band to ever exist for a while. It spoke to my soul when I found that in like fourth grade. Uh, Stained also, those two bands I thought were the greatest, but uh, classic Stained, man. Uh, that first album, Tormented? I, I, think so. I don't know, we don't need to talk about Stained. But uh, better stuff, like, of course, Hendrix. Hendrix was probably the first artist that I just like really loved on my own that wasn't just like my parents music and then um from that like there was a lot of radio stuff like i love i love nirvana uh foo fighters and uh but then once i started wanting harder stuff like past like stain and papa roach um, one of the biggest bands that stuck with me from that is probably glass jaw glass jaw and head automatica Yeah, so a lot of heavy stuff, and then I went into more melodic stuff from, like, the last job, I went to, like, more melodic indie rock, because I found, like, the beauty and, like, crazy hardcore music with all the complicated stuff they're playing, so I went to, like, Minus the Bear and that kind of vein, and then from that I went to, like, acoustic stuff, and Elliot Smith became one of my favorite artists of all time, but uh, I got back into rap music because... I saw, uh, I had kind of been listening to rap music again, uh, but I saw Minus the Bear when I was in school in Madison, Wisconsin, and P.O.S. from Doomtree opened up for them, and it blew my brain open. I was just like, oh, uh, like, I got his whole backstory in just watching his show. It was like, you are a weird black kid from the Midwest, you like rock music, and then you found rap music again and you're like oh crap you can make rap music really hard and it's awesome let's do this i like wordplay so forming the person that i am today came from having parents who are as weird as i am mostly like i growing up i was always just like like i got called like i got called oreo by other black kids uh, that mm, that sweet sweet internalized racism uh, and then of course I caught crap from the other kids because I was black so I felt like I didn't fit in anywhere and then I looked at the rest of my family and I was like why am I so weird and why are you okay with it but then I grew up and I was looking through my mom's albums and I found a fishbone album and I was just like you were the weird kid too I get it now also, Fishbone is the jam. If anybody listening to this hasn't listened to Fishbone, listen to Fishbone. Because I was always really big on other people getting to be who they wanted to be, but I was always so self-deprecating and hard on myself. Like I, uh, I've, I have a chemical imbalance, so I've had like depression and anxiety my whole life, which went untreated for a really long time. So I was always super down on myself, and then. I got older and I realized like I was gonna be here for a while and I should probably start to enjoy it and at some point I was like you know what screw these people I'm a boss let's kick some ass let's do this and I faked that confidence until I had it and now dear god am I narcissistic I love me oh all right, we'll be back with our special guest, Biz Vicious, in a minute. Let me tell you that the beat you're listening to in the background is coming to you from my homie from Melbourne, Australia. His name is Hunter Different. And you can check him out right now on SoundCloud, soundcloud.com slash H-U-N-D-R-E-D-D-I-F-F-E-R-E-N-T. That's soundcloud.com slash Hunter Different. All right, so we're back in here joined by a special guest, who apparently is vicious. <laughs> All right, so being your own independent artist, uh, you wear a lot of hats. I guess explain to the people that are not so musically inclined, how does the whole process work and how do you put everything together? Um, so my approach to it 
is, uh, like I said earlier, chemical imbalances. And a lot of it is just producing real hard when I'm manic. Uh, you can get a lot done when you are manic. And it's not healthy, but if it presents in a productive way, people don't get as concerned about it. So that's nice. But um, I, uh, like I said, I make music because I want to hear it. And I think it's interesting when I hear other people talk about stuff, uh, making music, especially people who know theory, because they'll talk about wanting a sound that's something like this. Most of the time, I hear the song in my head, and I'm just trying to find a way to recreate it, to make it exist for other people to hear. I don't have a car. I walk or catch the bus to get around because uh, I was in a huge car wreck in high school. And I was like, you know what? That was a bunch of money, and I don't have another bunch of money. Uh, I'm going to drive less. So, uh, But catching the bus, like sitting on a bus, especially if it's a long bus ride, I've done so much production just like sitting on buses. And I just kind of zone out and tap at things until I hear what I want to hear and then for writing my vocals uh, I I do pretty much everything on my iPhone I uh, I have a Mac Mini now and I have Logic now but still I'm mostly just on GarageBand on my phone because it's what I've been doing for so long and because I just do it as a release for me the creating content part isn't so hard to do all on my own. Usually I wish that I had bandmates when I'm booking shows, promoting shows, when I'm trying to get it from existing to other people. You're listening to Patty's Radio 18, coming to you on HMS Net Radio via the Patty's Radio podcast at pattysradio.podomatic.com. And your new home of Patty's Radio, KPFT 90.1 FM, HD Channel 3. How does your experience as a kid growing up being misunderstood and just not fitting in, how do you think that translates to your music? And do you use your platform as an artist to try to talk to, I guess, younger folks or your listeners who may be going through the same thing? I mean, I do it for kids like me, but I don't. I don't do it in that awful pandering way where I'm just like, hey, have you felt like you're not represented in music? Let me talk to you and tell you it's okay. Like, no, I tell you, like, I I just talk about my actual life instead of trying to talk about what's popular in music. Like, I talk about being genderqueer and polyamorous uh, the last album that I put out is it's my first album that I put out I've made other albums but uh, the album is a queer dance rap album because the, there aren't a bunch of like jams for like kids who are like I don't know exactly what my gender is but I'm trying to fuck you and you and you what's up like and uh, that's the life that I was living, and I want like I wanted something to party to. Like I made it for me, and honestly, I wasn't I wasn't thinking like I didn't think other people were gonna connect with it like that. But when the songs on my album, the hook goes, uh, my girlfriend's got a boyfriend who's my girlfriend, my boyfriend too. My girlfriend's got a boyfriend who's my girlfriend, my boyfriend too. My girlfriend's got a boyfriend who's my girlfriend, my boyfriend too. We all three on OKC, status set to available. Uh, and I played that and like I wrote that song and I was just like, this is the jam. This is the life that I'm living and it's awesome. And the first time I played it at a show, I was like, I looked out and I was like, oh, I have no idea how other people are actually going to react to this. And afterwards, all these people, like people who, uh, it was beautiful because like, even when you are like, when you're queer in whatever way or you're different in whatever way sometimes because we don't get representation you forget 
that there are people who occupy the space that you occupy and they're just normal looking people so people who just looked super normal and average and like cool people were coming up to me and they're just like oh my god that song like that's crazy you blew my brain and some of them were like yes that's the life i'm living too and some people were like your life sounds crazy and that's awesome but yeah just uh i'm making it for me and i know there are other people out there who are like me so i i don't go out of my way to try to pander to those groups if i see if i see an opportunity to get it out there to those groups i'm definitely going to try to get it out there because that's just good marketing and i'm a whole marketing team and also like i make this music because i wanted it to exist before i was making it so hopefully some kid can hear it and then have that that deep breath of oh like this exists someone else said something that means this to me with without them having to make it themselves alone in their room and feeling like maybe i'm the only one who feels this way all right so we're about to get into music for my special guest you can follow on twitter at b-i-z-z-y-k-i-d-v-i-c-i-o-u-s that's at busy kid vicious let them know what song they're about to hear on hashtag your new favorite radio program. Uh, so this one I made, it's uh, got kind of a classic hip hop feel to it because I was just feeling that kind of way while I was producing it. And uh, in that spirit, a lot of braggadocia, uh, talking about myself and I talk about myself, talking about myself while I'm doing the song. My vocals are in the beat and then I uh, layer my vocals in the verses. You can see the video for it if you uh, search for it on YouTube, in which I actually make out with myself. The song is about narcissism and my greatness, and it's called Biz Please. I love it. Well, Busy, go ahead and take it away. This is Biz Vicious, and this song is Biz Please, only on Patty's Radio. When I'm selling the spit, I got them like this place. When I'm selling CDs, I got them like this place. When I'm selling on stage, I got them like this place. This place. This place. When I'm selling my spit, I got them like this place. When I'm selling CDs, I got them like this place. When I'm selling on stage, I got them like this place. This place. This place. It's so it's no dish cake vicious. Miss cinematic, I make words in the pictures. I reverse indifference, sorts of indignance. Problematic for people who say they don't get offended. I admit that I'm a narcissist. Why else would I produce rap and listen to this? I got my name as part of the damn beat. And my voice in multiple octaves so I can speak directly to you at least two times at once. Shout my name and still saying what I want. I'm my own favorite topic. I can't even front, but that's because the daily news has been bad all month. One step forward, every day to leave stumps. Long road ahead, hitting every single Asking for change and not holding a cup Holding the sign that says speak the fuck up I'm the spit, I got him like this please When I'm selling CDs, I got him like this please When I'm sucking on stage, I got him like this please This please, this please When I'm selling my spit, I got him like this please When I'm selling CDs, I got him like this please When I'm sucking on stage, I got him like this please This please yeah. Am I a social pariah or is it paranoia? Sorry, I'm just tripping. Let me know if I annoy you. Maybe you're the pariah. I should avoid you. Maybe I should close my eyes and step into the void too. Listen to my words and let spirit move you. If you aren't in tune, it does not include you. If you don't understand all that I allude to, maybe you should take remedial literature. Maybe you need confidence. You seem unsure. Maybe I need cheese and my thoughts are impure. Maybe whiskey ginger for the fears and the burn. Maybe you just need a little boost. Say the word. I just need a shot at it being my turn. If they don't take it. I'll flip them all the bird. Seem a little sick, but I can make a referral. Maybe you just need a bit of his in your world. I'm spit, I got them like this place. When I'm selling CDs, I got them like this place. When I'm sucking on stage, I got them like this place. This place. This place. 
this place. When I'm still in my spin, I got them like this place. When I'm selling CDs, I got them like this place. When I'm sucking on stage, I got them like this place. This place. This place. B I Z B I C I O U S. Oh, are you just the cutest? Plus, to the K with the futurist palm, making noise because squad gives a sick feeling of calm. Not too aggressive, but never too disarmed. Walks off from prepared to break arms. Try to make friends from prepared to break bonds. Dip lock myself with a room and spit bombs. Make a lot of lists using Oxford commas to call out the classes for saying that you gotta. Used to be a grammarian until I got the concepts of telling that person they're improper. Used to think America's main jam was no kings, but then I realized that they must have been joking. What's colonialism without royalty? If anybody ever finds out, tell me. When I'm spit, I got them like this place. When I'm selling CDs, I got them like this place. When I'm sucking on stage, I got them like this place. This place. This place. When I'm selling my spit, I got them like this place. When I'm selling CDs, I got them like this place. When I'm sucking on stage, I got them like this place. 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 Here joined by special guest Biz Vicious on this 18th edition of your new favorite radio program, broadcasted from 314 Main in downtown Houston, Texas, at the legendary Not Sua. For the artists that I've had on this program, I like to ask just to get a general idea for our listeners who have never been to their city or region or country. Uh, if you can touch on what the music scene in Houston is like, as far as relationships between artists and just culturally, we are in an amazing place for culture. There's so much music and art going on. And I love the Houston culture because we have something that a lot of other cities don't have. We have the ability to say, uh, screw your venue, we're gonna throw a house party show. And because of that, like back in the day when I first moved to the Montrose, like I'm friends with uh, Fat Tony and Blackie, just dropping all these names, I'll pick those up later. But like, Fat Tony, Blackie, kids from Tauntauns, Wild Moxons, The Suffers, uh, Female Demand, just a bunch of uh, cop warmth, just so many bands in totally different veins, but they would all play house party shows together. We would all hang out and drink and just like have fun together. And it wasn't about, oh, are you all the same genre? It was just, are you going to kill it if we put you on this show? Yes get your stuff let's go we're gonna do a show so that's where i'm trying to come from as an artist i'm just trying to make something that isn't trying to be for everyone and still get it out to everybody who can feel it so we're here with your boy biz vicious and uh i guess let all the patties peeps listening right now on hms net radio via the patties radio podcast and right now on kpft 90.1 fm and little pockets all over the globe uh, being an artist from Houston, uh, we're known all over the world for Screw. You hear a lot of talk about new Houston, trying to get away from the old sounds. How does your music and you yourself as an artist fit into that, or do you at all? Uh, I fit in, but it comes from stuff that you can't put on CD that I can't record. Like I fit in with the other artists in Houston, like... I'm driving to Dallas with uh, Falcon Fugue. <laughs> Falcon Fuger, we'll say that. Yeah. Uh, we live down the street from each other, like we chill, we're homies. Uh, Niku and I, Gio Chamba and I, we're all friends. We see each other out at the bar. We all just get along. Kose, uh, two of my favorite people on the planet. Like. I get along with them as friends and we're all so excited about what we're doing and excited about other people making something pure and honest. Like I fit in as a rapper from the Montrose because I don't sound like, like I don't sound like Rick Ross because I wouldn't believe me if I was trying to sound like Rick Ross and neither would they. So when I come out uh, talking about like, social equality and gender issues and getting super drunk and wilding out and then switch right back over to talking about like 
race issues like that's that's the space we exist in that's what we talk about so when i put that on music that's me so people feel it on facebook it's facebook.com backslash b-i-z-z-y vicious or you can just search biz vicious and that'll send you to my band camp, my Instagram, my Twitter, my SoundCloud. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got your last song of the evening coming up in a minute. All right, ladies and gents, it's time for one of my favorite parts of the program. This is your Pettis Top 5, the segment where our special guest gives you five things that they enjoy the most. And the best part of that is, and I get to tell you that if you got a problem with it, don't tweet at me. Tweet at them, baby. In this case, tweet at Ben's Fishes on Twitter at B-I-Z-Z-Y-K-I-D-V-I-C-I-O-U-S. So right now, coming to you from Not Sewer on HMS Net Radio via the Pattis Radio Podcast, and your new home of Pattis Radio, KPFT 90.1 FM, HD Channel 3. This is Biz Fish is giving you his Pattis Top 5. Biz, take it away. Yo, um, so I just get the chance to give you my top five, and uh, right now I want to give you my top five ways to curse at somebody without actually cursing. I love it. I love it. FCC, get ready. Here we go. All right. All right. Uh, so uh, coming in at number five, I love this one, but I use it a lot because it's easy to get to. Douche lozenge. Now, the thing about douche lozenge is that uh, sometimes people think like, oh, that might be misogynistic. No. Um, no one wants a douche fi- flavored lozenge. It's just saying like, you are something undesirable. I'll allow it. I'll allow FCC. I don't know. But we're going to find out. Go ahead. Number four. All right. Uh, hope, I, I'm hoping I can make it through this segment without you having to believe <laughs> anything. You'll know where to stop when the black suit's coming on. You'll know. Right. Uh, I, I think that it's very important to keep your uh, insult muscles limber. You don't want to just fall back on what everybody uses. Um, all right. So that was number five. And number four, we have knob swap. What you have to keep in mind about insulting somebody, it doesn't necessarily have to mean anything. You just have to say it in the right tone. You can make any word sound like it's a curse word if you say it with conviction. Did I say that word again? Knob swoggle. Use it in a sentence. Look at this dumb knob swoggle over here. <laughs> Walking around like he's somebody. <laughs> I was going to ask, is there a place of origin for that word? Is there a place of origin? No, sometimes I just like the way syllables sound together. <laughs> Hi, this All right, is number Ed. three. Coming in at number Sorry, three, to I've got to thank my mom for this one. Please Jitney. Oh, I like that. One more time. Jitney, uh, which is actually a term for a service that uh, used to take people out past, like, where the buses would go in a city but my mom was telling a story and said that and i was just like that just sounds derogatory <laughs> like yeah i was out on that side of town you know with all the jitneys <laughs> like it just sounds bad i haven't gotten to use it at anybody yet uh but I, i'm looking forward to it um, i imagine right now there's some old man on the porch nodding his head like yes yes <laughs> Actually, I can tell you the history of that word, and it's quite offensive. All right, we're in here with Biz Bitch. He's about to give you his number two way to insult somebody. Sometimes you got to just take it take it back. Uh, and uh, it, you can't go wrong with just calling somebody a dum-dum. It makes people really, really upset. They, like, all of a sudden they're just like... Are we in second grade? I don't remember how to deal with this. It's like, yeah, you're right. You don't remember, you big dumb dumb. What's wrong with you? It's, it's easy. Just short, sweet, in and out. And then uh, we're going to go in with number one. I This one, I, I uh, called a road man this tonight uh, while renting a car because he thought that it was cool to just start berating the people working there because usually people think that's fine like oh I can take out my uh, 
my angers and my crappy life on this person who has to listen to me because I can review on Yelp. Uh, so I let him know that wasn't cool and I told him he was not making anything go any faster by acting like a big pee pants baby about the whole thing. Pee pants baby, ladies and gentlemen. Number one. He pants baby. Ladies and gentlemen, that was your top five ways to insult someone without cursing. Brought to you by your boy Biz Vicious, who you can find right now on Facebook at Facebook. Search Biz Vicious, Facebook.com backslash B I Z Z Y Vicious. And like I said, I'm going to say it once again as a disclaimer if you got a problem with that bad and top five, don't tweet at me. Tweet at him at B I Z Z K I D V I C I O U S. That's Busy Kid Vicious on the Twitter. We got your last on the evening coming up in a minute, but before we do that, I want to ask you a serious topic, or let's let's talk about something really close to your heart, uh, your socially active side, because you're not only a musician, but you're socially active in the community, and I guess more more so than some other artists out there, you're very socially aware. So if you will, just let the Paddis peeps know, I guess uh, where you stand and just how you feel about some things in general. So, uh, more so than how I think about it as a musician dictating where it goes into my music, how I think about it as a person in my day-to-day life uh, really defines where it all comes in. I believe that so much of what people get away with every day is because we all let people get away with things. So, as long as that racist guy in your office keeps making those jokes and no one calls him out on it and everybody is still hang, like goes out to lunch with that dude he's never going to have the experience that's going to make him go like oh maybe i shouldn't do this as long as one of your friends it who's your best buddy but he's super sexist and always makes women feel uncomfortable stays your best buddy those people are never going to change honestly i feel like if everyone stopped sleeping with bigots, like if everybody just raised their own standards and then drew that line, like, I don't care how hot you are, I'm going to find someone with good morals and uh, the things that make my goody parts go, whoo! Like, if you put those two things together and everybody stopped sleeping with bigots, bigots would eventually either realize, oh, the only people who will sleep Hi, with me are Lambert. awful, Sorry, uh, or they will all just deal with each Please other and go out of vogue. So, in staying true to that, like, I just, uh, I talk about the things that I talk about with no remorse. Like, I, I aim at those people who are like, I'm an equal opportunity offender because I don't get offended. Those are the easiest people to offend. I take shots at those people every chance I get because it's so easy to turn one of those people into a crying third grader. Like, it takes no time. Like, oh, you don't get offended? You're a racist. Oh, but I, but I, uh, nope, sorry, you're a bigot and the world doesn't need, oh, uh, if you tell, don't tell those people you're going to kill them because that's, uh, that's wrong and also illegal. That's a threat. But if you tell bigots, just, uh, yeah, I, I hope you die because the world will be better without you. Like, no, like, I, I'm not saying, like, I, like, I'm wishing any specific type of death on you. But, like, if uh, you get too drunk tonight and crash your car and you're not wearing your seatbelt, I'm not going to flinch. Like, and they get so offended. And uh, what I try to explain to them is that as offended as they are by me saying that I don't care about them personally dying, I'm not impressed by them caring if I personally die because they met me when they clearly don't care if I die because I'm some random black d- black person because I'm some random queer person if they don't care like if they don't care about somebody's some random person's life getting ruined because there's no justice for people who get sexually assaulted in this country because we live in a rape culture like 
if you if you don't care about people in general just because you don't know them personally then knowing you personally i have no regard for your status as a living person does your activism change your approach to music do you do you have any thoughts on how the landscape got to where it is part of the reason why i believe so strongly that we should call people out in our day-to-day lives is because people act like people act simultaneously like there's going to be some magical thing that fixes uh gender inequality race inequality everything people act like we just have to figure out this one thing and that'll be fine and then at the same time people act like it's this big mystical thing that no one is responsible for. But if you actually pay attention to history and look at what's happened, we are all, at least everyone who's not fighting against it is tacitly responsible for it. And even if you aren't actively trying to make things worse, you can look at scientific studies in history and see that the way things are set up are made to hate made to make you hate people without knowing anything about them for no reason because it behooves a bunch of people who you're never going to get to be a part of like it's everything is set up to subjugate as many people as possible in as small of a pocket as you can separate them into with them still feeling like a unit and not realizing that really they're trying to subjugate everybody like there's a reason that people are more likely to assume that a random object in a black person's hand is a gun there's a reason that even though like only two to ten percent of all reported rapes uh across like most uh most studies that are done turn out to be false but people can still bring up false reporting of rape in arguments like it's a valid argument like about 40 percent of rapes actually get reported two to ten percent of those are false so they're still 60 we think about 60 percent of the rapes that happen that are just totally unaccounted for and then of the 40 percent that anyone actually like steps up and reports uh nothing happens the majority of the time like people don't do jail time usually it doesn't ruin people's lives and as long as we live in a society where you can take somebody's humanity away from them and get off with a slap on the wrist and we act like it's worse to be called a misogynist or a racist or a rapist or whatever kind of bigot whatever kind of hateful person than it is to be subjugated by someone our whole society is going to suffer and it creates the society where black people can be killed with impunity women can be physically assaulted with impunity trans people can be uh, there's this thing called correctional rape that still happens in like to people in the lgbtq community especially trans people and most people don't even know about it and like as long as things like that happen and we're so worried about dudes getting called rapists when they're not when that happens so little like as long as the people who have the power it's more important to make sure that they aren't falsely accused than it is to make sure that someone else isn't being wronged that's gonna be the way society goes you've reached the end of this 18th edition of your new favorite radio program broadcasting from 314 Maine in downtown Houston, Texas at the legendary Natsua. Uh, we're about to get out of here, but before we do, let them know everything that's going on with Biz Vicious. What can we expect from you in the future and how they can support you right now online? Um, right now, I'm just working as much as I can. Um, 
because I'm trying to do that regular person grind, but in the meantime, until I find something where somebody will actually pay me decent money, I'm just making hell of music. So um, I uh, have an old album that I decided to shelf until after We Lurk Among You uh, called uh, Good Grief, where every track represents a stage of grief, which I made after one of my dear friends passed. Uh, shout out to all my friends from Corner House. I love you guys. Um, so I've got that that I'm cleaning up and I'm going to put out. I'm working with a uh, boyfriend from New Orleans, uh, Falcon Fugue, and I are doing some stuff together. We're working on uh, figuring out how to do some stuff together for some live shows, try to do something where, uh, like, a lot of rappers right now are getting a live producer to just be, like, their backing band. I want to try to do something where it's... Uh, more of his show and we do it like old school rap style where i'm there to like get the crowd hype and it's not about my songs like i throw out verses instead of like talking trash about how great i am i talk trash about how great he is um i uh been talking to uh to uh, the homies from deaf perception uh fat tony is one of my old friends he owes me a verse i'm gonna eventually just walk over to his house and be like yo i really like this track rap now yeah uh, tell me he wants his verse i want my verse tony we're about to get out of here with our special guest but before we do i want to ask this vicious you got anything you want to say to the Paddis peeps listening around the globe on hms natal radio via the Paddis radio podcast and on kpft 90.1 hd channel 3 the floor is yours take it away okay yo this is my shameless self-promotion point so yo uh find me on instagram b-i-z-z-y underscore vicious find me on twitter b-i-z-z-y k-i-d vicious uh search b-i-z vicious on facebook or facebook.com backslash b-i-z-z-y vicious soundcloud.com backslash b-i-z vicious and you can get the album we lurk among you at bizvicious.bandcamp.com and that's also where I'm going to be putting out uh, all my upcoming projects. Oh, also, uh, I'm going to be putting out an album with Adultery Kidding. Shout out to uh, Devin and Gabriella Finch working on that. I'm trying to work with everybody in Houston who I can. Shout out to uh, the people who I play with all the time. Space Villains, Koze, Gio Chamba, Niku, um, everybody at Prince Not Prince. Uh... Uh, I feel like I'm going to mess up and leave out a band that I play with all the time. Uh, everybody check out every band you can in the Montrose because they're all super dope. Oh, Wit, Monterose. There we go. Um, shout out to Happy Nomad Booking. Congratulations to the owner, Sean Padillo, on getting married. Uh, yeah, I think I think that's successful shout out session. And you like it, I love it. Well, for Biz Vicious, my name is E-Rev. I'm on Instagram and Twitter at E-A-Z-Y-E-R-E-V. Make sure you check out Patty's Radio all over social media at P-A-T-T-I-E-S Radio. That's at Patty's Radio on Twitter and Instagram. Check us out on SoundCloud, P-A-T-T-I-E-S Radio on Facebook. And remember, you can check out this program anytime at our podcast site, patty'sradio.podomatic.com.